Welcome to the $150,000 a month web design blueprint. What I'm going to be doing is outlining everything that I've set myself for next year to become a six figure per month earner as a web designer. I'm going to go through the destination or the goals that I've set for myself and the vehicle that I'm using to get there. So all the goals, how I take it off, how I track it, all of this. Then I'm going to show how to apply it to your position right now. And then I'm going to give some specific examples for you that you can use in conjunction with what I'm doing to become a six figure per month earner yourself. Now you can use these to go from zero to fund. You can use it to go from five to 10K a month, 10K to 100K a month. The steps are applicable every single step of the way. It's just that at certain levels, you do it with scale. So it's the same steps as you grow, you just scale the volume more. So that's really important heading into this. We're gonna go through mindset. We're gonna go through how to set everything up, how to action it, and then we're going to get into the source. So I won't waste any more time because the video is going to be very, very long as is. So I'll take you on over to the screen and let's dive in. Okay, so this is my personal blueprint. What I'm going to be doing from now to the end of the year and then from the start of next year, basically all year. Now I'm going to walk you through exactly what I'm doing, but I'm going to have also some specific recommendations for you guys because I realized that the point of the journey that I'm on may be slightly different to you, but it's always good to see where other people are. And hopefully if you're a little bit earlier on in your journey, this can act as a little bit of inspiration. So let's move on to where exactly I am right now. I build lots of websites on Squarespace and without sounding big headed, I build really good ones. So here's a few examples that I've done. I've got the Dame Kelly Holmes Trust, and this one was for a company called the XP Awards. And this website was for SEO space, which is the fastest growing Squarespace based soft Squarespace based Squarespace based software in the world. So I have a really good portfolio. I'm doing roughly forty thousand dollars per month as a company of one, which is amazing. I don't have to worry about paying people. I don't have to worry about managing, you know, nothing. But I know that I can do so much more if I just give the business what it needs. I saw a, I think it was a reel this week, and there was a guy talking about what you want versus what your business needs. And he said, if you're making money, don't be the person who goes out to show people that they're making money. Ask yourself, well, what is my business crying out for? Let's say you've got $1,000. Is my business crying out for me to enroll in a course? Is my business crying out for me to pay $1,000 for a week intense mentorship from someone who's above me that can then make the business another ten, twenty thousand dollars a month? Or do I want to spend a thousand dollars on bottle service because I want that and I can take pictures of it and show people that I'm rich. And so this is the point that I'm sort of at. I already know that I have to invest big into my business. That's something I've been doing for years. I don't mind spending money. But one thing that I've worked on a lot this year is paying bigger sums for better guidance. So for instance, Henry from SEO Space, I've just paid him a lot, a lot of money for six months of SEO work on my website. Now, maybe last year or the year before, I would have thought, oh, that's that's too much. I'm going to go with someone cheaper. But then the mindset switch that I've gone through and that you should be looking to go through is that you need to look at price versus value. So instead of seeing a product or a service or whatever it is and going immediately, okay, that's $10,000. That's the price. Uh, I'm not having it, I'm, I'm not buying it because it's $10,000. You need to start, and by the way, if you just haven't got $10,000 to spend, obviously that doesn't apply. But if you do have $10,000 and the only reason that you're not buying whatever this thing is for $10,000 is just because of how much it costs without analyzing the value, then that's the wrong mindset. So if we ignore the cost for a little bit and then just look at the value, let's say I spend $10,000 with Henry to do the SEO on my website. Okay, that's a big upfront cost. But what if Henry's $10,000 service gets me $10,000 per month extra every single month for the next year? Well, there's the value. I've spent $10,000 on the best expert and I've made 100,000. No, 120,000. And so I've made 110,000 profit. That's the value. So instead of immediately poo-pooing something because of how much it costs, look at the value, look what it can actually provide to your life. And it doesn't even have to be monetary. So another thing I invested in, I'm going off on a complete tangent here, but I invested 
$2,000 in a health coach. So $2,000 for three months of mentorship slash workout slash check-ins, accountability, whatever. That doesn't give me a monetary goal, but it makes me a better human. It makes me better in the business. It makes me feel better in life. It gives me a better understanding about fitness, about my body. It makes me look better. All of this, okay, it's $2,000 for three months, but the value that I get from that is, is huge. So like I say, complete tangent, but that's where I am. I'm, I've already flicked the switch, but I'm still going through the process in terms of investing heavily. And this is what you'll see when I share my screen, when I go through my notes, that a lot of it is based on investments at the time or money. So that's where I am to recap roughly $40,000 a month, build great websites, company of one, but I know that I can do so much more. So with that in mind, we'll move on to the pre-season. So this is my favorite, favorite time of the year. It's that time from probably the end of November to first week of January. That's when things really kick off is let's, let's just call it the 10th of January onwards. Now, the reason I love it is because for the most part, you're going to experience a lull in work towards the end of the year. That's just how it is. People sort of mentally check out. They're thinking about Thanksgiving. They're thinking about Christmas. They're thinking about time off. You know, they want to have fun. They don't want to be making deals. And so I've noticed the past couple of years, well, in fact, two years ago, I was doing 10, 12-ish thousand pounds, like $15,000 a month. And then in December, I did 500 pounds. So like, what, $700. It was that drastic of a difference. And that's because of just the way invoices fell, work fell. January, it picked right back up. But December gets like that. And for a lot of people, this gets them down and it demotivates them and they just, they almost give up or they take that negative energy into the new year. Uh, I don't want to get onto like energies, but they take that negative mindset and they take that into the new year when in reality, you should be coming into the new year with, you know, vigor and you should be excited and prepared and all of this. Because of this downturn in work, they think, oh, they get a bit of imposter syndrome. They think, oh, you know, this might be you. You might think, oh, well, I've not got so much work in December. So is this really for me? Should I invest in myself? Should I invest? Not just, I'm not just even talking about money. I'm talking about time. Like, do I invest time to prepare for the next year? Maybe I should just go and get a job, whatever it is. And I, I felt this, even though I proved to myself that I was doing, you know, uh, what, five figures? Five figures a month. Like, I was still like, oh, it was the past 11 months a fluke? I don't know. But what I did was I used all that time. I said to myself, okay, well, if that was a fluke, then I need to prepare. If, if that was a fluke, if it was just luck for 11 months straight, then I need to make it not luck. I need to engineer my own luck. And so that December was my first pre-season. And we all intuitively do pre-season in that we say, wow, we've got like six mince pies in our mouth. And we say, oh, you know, next January, I'll, I'll go to the gym. And you've got crumbs all over you. And you say to yourself, right, you know, I'll draw up a workout plan and I'll do some Googling and next year, that's my year. And then it, it never happens because we don't put concrete plans in place. It's just, it's this, not ethereal, it's like just this distant thing that it's not you, basically. And you have to, I'll come on to this, you have to almost change your entire character, your entire essence to become that person. Let's say, you know, you've got these mince pies all in your mouth and you're looking at this version of you who goes to the gym, has got a six pack, is happy, they're glowing. You're looking at this version and you you think, that's, that's the dream version of me. It's almost like an unobtainable version of you. You put it on this pedestal without any actual roadmap to get there. So what we need to do with this preseason is we treat it like an athlete. I now view myself as a keyboard, <laughs> a keyboard athlete in that I have a full preseason to get ready for January. So I approach it as an athlete would approach an actual pre-season. I'm planning and I'm training and I'm putting actual steps in place that I can I can use. So I can use these as stepping stones to get to where I want to go. If we just go back to here, I'm saying the $150,000 a month web design blueprint. I'm not looking at the $150,000 
a month version of me and going, oh my God, that guy. Uh, I'm thinking, well, no, that's just where I'm going to be. Let me reverse engineer it. What are the steps that I need to take? So I'm not putting me on a pedestal. I'm saying that is me. It's just me when I've taken these steps. So this is how we need to treat him. And I realize I've already gone on for about 10 minutes here. But without the mindset shift and without the nuance and the context, the rest of the power, well, it's not a PowerPoint, but the rest of the presentation is going to be completely useless. So that's going to be your shift in identity is that I'm going to get to whatever it is. Let's say for you, it's I want to hit my first five figure month. Okay, $10,000 version of me. Well, what steps do I need to take there? Don't just sit there and idolize that person and say, oh, I could imagine that was me. Oh, like it is you if you put the correct steps in. You can't claim the results of the work that you didn't do. And what this means is you can't, you can't fantasize about this version of you without having the receipts and without actually doing the work. Because this is what happens, especially when I'm hesitant to tell people my goals because of this. But when you tell people your goals and what you're going to do, you get that boost. You get that dopamine hit when they go, oh, wow, that, that sounds good. Internally, your mind thinks, oh, I've just got some great feedback. I've done it. And immediately you go, oh, well, I've got the good feedback for saying I'm going to do it. And then you never do it. So all that to say, don't put that future you on a pedestal, don't fantasize about it. You can you can visualize, you can visualize what life is going to be and use that as a motivator. But the fact of the matter is, that is you in 6 to 12 months if you put the correct steps in place. And so this is why I'm going to go through all the steps that I'm taking. And I've kind of touched on this, but this is why we frame it like this. I frame it like pre-season because this is no longer a vision board. This is no longer manifestation. This is simply training to get to where I need to go. If a coach comes into a football or soccer team, whatever, then they're going to come in and they're going to say, okay, pre-season, we've got the season coming up in eight weeks. What do we need to do to win the league? Okay, well, we need our forwards to be fast. We need our defenders to be strong. We need our midfield to have cardiovascular fitness so they can run everywhere. Okay, well, we're going to put the defenders in the weight room. We're going to put the midfielders on the treadmills and we're going to put the forwards on the sprint track. Okay, that's the plan. Then we're going to all come together as a team and we're going to eat this meal at this time, this meal at this time. We're going to have everyone sleeping eight to nine hours a night. We're going to be doing stretching. We're going to be talking tactics. I'm going to instill my values within the team and we're going to play this way. We're going to play this type of formation you know whatever it is and then we're going to do two weeks training at high altitude to get used to playing away at different teams whatever it is we're going to do meditation we're going to do all this we're going to study our opponents this is what it takes to win and everything is sport really like if you're a web designer watching this it's it is sport we're all competing at well it's a big community, but we're all competing against each other. And this is what's fun. It's a it's a big game, realistically. The fun comes in chasing clients and getting on calls and interacting and, and winning the clients. Winning a client is like winning a game of football or a game of soccer. Like, it's, it's a rush. It's a thrill. But we can't do that unless we actually put the groundwork in. So imagine you're the coach. Imagine, you know, if you look at yourself in the third person, you are your own coach. If you were to come in and objectively assess your situation, what would you say? So this coach has come in and they've said, okay, well, you get in the weight room, you get on the sprint track, you get on the treadmill, eat this, eat that, sleep sleep then. They're going to come in and say all this. What do you need to do if your goal is $10,000 a month? You already know what it takes. You just need to put it in an action plan and actually execute on it every single day. So... This is why we have to frame it like this, because it takes the subjectivity out of it. It becomes completely objective. It's like, okay, this is the goal. I know what I need to do. This is the list of things I need to do. I've listed it down. I've made it into a plan. This is my pre-season. I'm just going to execute on it. So that's why we frame it like this. And it's going to give us clarity. So it's vital for clarity, because if we go back to the mince pie analogy, people will say, oh, that's me stuffing my face with mince pies. But they'll say, oh, yeah, well... January, it's a new year, it's a new me, I'm going to change all my behaviours, and we all go, okay, yeah, great, but we never actually push that person and say, 
okay, you're going to change your entire being. You're going to change everything about yourself and you're going to just do it on January 1st. You, you're literally just going to turn a switch and that's it. Stop the mince pies. Stop eating all that food. Start going to the gym. It's, it's not who they are. And I've been there. It, it's, it's not a part of your build-up, you know. Why all of a sudden would you just switch and know what to do and stick to it? It's why every, every, literally everyone fails unless they have a plan. So we need to do this. We need to get this clarity, like I'm saying here. We need a step-by-step plan. Because if you were to push that person and say, okay, you're going to change everything in January, how? They're going to look at you with, you know, that minced meat dribbling out the mouth and go, I have no idea. That's what they're going to say. They're going to say, I have no idea how I'm going to change because all I've thought about is the change and not the mechanism to actually enact that change. And this is why we need to think about the mechanism. How do we get there? And so we get there by thinking of the destination, which is everyone does, but then stepping backwards. Okay, so what does the person who earns $10,000 a month do every single day? What do they do? Okay, well, maybe they sit at their desk for 7 a.m. and they work for two hours. No distractions, the phone's away. I think I did this in my last video, but just there is a box. Let me move the mic. There's a box where I'll lock my phone away for a few hours and I'll just get to work. So I literally, you know, I, I'm not a, I'm not a saint. I'm not, well, I'm not a saint, but I'm not a robot who can just like have his phone and then not go on it and just work. I, st- I can't, no one can do that. No one's a freak. Well, maybe there are some freaks, but no one can realistically do that. And so you have to make life easy for yourself by putting the distractions away. If it's getting a box, if it's putting it in the bedroom, if it's putting it in the, in the toilet and closing the lid, doesn't matter. You need to make your life so frictionless that you don't have to think or use any willpower. So for me, or let's just go back to the $10,000 a month uh, web designer. For them, they get up, they'll slide the phone into the toilet and then they'll just go and work, sit down at the desk with a coffee or a water and they'll go, okay, three hours, that's all I need to do. And because that's all they need to do, because that's all they give themselves, they can do that every single day because they're not saying, I'm going to sit there for 12 hours and no one's no one's going to distract me and then I'll go and do four hours in the gym. They're not setting these crazy goals. It's just do the simple stuff, do it really well and do it really consistently. So they, they show up three hours a day, every single day, including Saturdays and Sundays for some people. They're going to be way ahead of everyone. That's why they earn $10,000 a month. And to be honest, if someone was doing that and they'd done it for two, three years, they'd be earning way more than $10,000 a month. I'll tell you that now. Now, that's just an example. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you exactly what I'm going to do. And I'll show you my day plan as well, because that's pretty a pretty decent place for everyone to start. Obviously, I understand if you have like a nine to five, it's, it's not going to apply. But if you have control of your own hours, then it's, it's a pretty decent day plan. So I'll show you that as well. But anyway... That's why we need clarity. With all that said, let's move on to how I structure my actual blueprint. So this is the crux of the video. Hopefully you've got past all the waffling. Well, I say waffling, it's really important that you go through the mindset stuff so you can make the most of this. But this is the actual actionable steps, or at least the actionable steps that I'm taking. So this is how I structured it. Now, it's just notes and Trello. Everything I do pretty much is notes and Trello. So notes is planning. It's, well, you'll see, you'll see it's, it's everything. And then Trello is execution. So what Trello allows me to do is just plan every day. So Monday, Tuesday, etc. And then within each day, I've got my tabs. And then in the tabs, I've got any details like this. So what you're seeing here is within a tab. So this is my preseason to do list. This is only a snapshot because I've actually done already like a lot of it so things that I still have to do this is within a tab so let's say this is on a Monday or but you can see here actually it's within a Saturday and the tab is called the pre-season to-do list then I've set up pixel and google analytics tracking Um, I've sorted my portfolio set up on all the freelance platforms that took me forever uh, I need to collect video testimonials for six figure design club links that I can't believe this is the first time I've actually mentioned it in this video Links are in the description for Six Figure Design Club. I teach uh, Squarespace web designers how to do this, or to do what I do anyway. Anyway, 
hire a Squarespace designer. I've had two or three that I've contacted and I've hired one to do the new sales page for Six Figure Design Club just because my priorities at the moment in terms of actually getting work in and elsewhere. Then I've got an offer within the club called Clubhouse, which is exclusive for just five members for one-on-one coaching. So I need to plan that out and actually flesh out how I'm going to onboard everyone, how I'm going to best serve them, etc., etc. And then I'm going to launch the new sales page that I've hired someone to do. And then I'm going to, well, I've already actually hired someone to do an email funnel uh, for Six Figure Design Club. So I just need to actually launch that. And then you can see here, this is the scale like crazy checklist that we're going to go through in a moment. So we don't have to dive into it here. We will dive into it in a minute. Now, we've got the dream end of year life set up. So I love to do this. I was talking about putting future you on a pedestal. Pedestal? Pedestal. And whilst you don't you don't want to be fantasized about it, you want to actually visualize yourself being that person and putting those steps in place. I always like to say, okay, this time next year, what will I be? Not I would like to be. These are the things that I will be. And then we go backwards from there. So I'm going to take you over to my notes and I'm going to show you how I actually structure my end of year life setup. Okay, so welcome to the notes. This is the the mind of a madman. So you can see like all down here, I have all sorts of random notes. Um, the locked in gent, that's just my day plan. I feel like if I call it a day plan, I never stick to it. So that's why I always change the name to something weird. Um, and then yeah, all sorts. Anyway, tangent. So this is the 2024 runway and strategy. And then I've called this the God Mode. As you can see, I like to give things weird names. Um, but this is the God Mode life setup by the end of year. And essentially what I'm saying to myself is this is the final boss version of Sam Crawford. This is the guy. When you get to this point, you're, you're a god amongst men. I don't know, maybe that's blasphemy. But you or I am going to be the top dog or feel like the top dog. Um, careful not to swear. But yeah, going to feel like the, the bee's knees. Anyway, and what I like to do is say, okay, a lot of it you'll see is actually behaviors. It's not like, well, there are things that, that talk about like skin and abs, but a lot of it is behaviors and things that I, I do because what I like to focus on a lot is environment and actions. And I believe personally, you're never going to enact change in your life unless you become the person that does the thing. So for instance, just to go, I always use the analogy of go to the gym in the new year. Okay, well, Currently, are you the person who it is more weird for you to miss the gym than it is to go to the gym? If someone saw you in a gym, would it be weird? If the answer is yes, then you're not that person yet. But if someone, if you said to someone, oh, I didn't go to the gym today, today, and they went, oh, that's weird, but, you know, you would be in good shape. If it's weird for you not to go to the gym, then you know that you're that person. So for me, I want it to be, okay, well... I sleep so well that I have 85 plus sleep scores on my aura ring. It's, that's part of my daily makeup. Like that is who I am. It would be weird for me to dip below 85. Um, the aura ring just measures, measures your uh, sleep scores, readiness, etc. A lot of it's fitness based because I feel like fitness and business are really interlinked. If you have a sharp body, you have a sharp mind and you can work for longer, you have more inspiration, blah, blah, blah. I'm not a fitness channel, but fitness and business should be equal priorities in my opinion. Anyway, let's not get in. Let's not get into fitness. We're on business. So we'll start with the business. By March, I want to be doing 75k per, per month. And I think this is easily doable. As I said, I'm at 40. The way I've been going, I think adding another 35 onto that is, is no problem. All I realistically realistically need is four to five extra um, client deposits, which with all the foundations that I've set in pre-season uh, are doable. And I'll show you all the things that I have actually done in this pre-season after this. But the reason I've skipped ahead, uh, you can see by the way down here, scale like crazy. That is the, the plan. That, that is the pre-season. And we will come on to that. But the reason I started with this is because we need to identify who you will be and work backwards. So this is this is, should be the first step. So as I said, 5K uh, by March, and then I want to double that by the end of the year. That gives me, uh, so what's 
March is the third month. That gives me another nine months. So by this time next year, I'll be doing 150k a month. And I'll come back to this video and I won't be eating humble pie, hopefully, just mince pies. Like, I will have done this and I'm happy to make a video on this. Otherwise, you can all publicly shame me. If, it's, if you're watching this in 2024, go onto my channel and look at, <laughs> either look for the video, how I hit 150k a month or some clickbait like I failed and then I'm, I'm crying on the thumbnail. Let's see. Anyway, ice bath and sauna. So I think maybe not the ice baths. Ice baths are kind of good for Instagram, but just the fact that I'm doing something hard. So, I'm, you know, ice bath in the morning. The fact that I elect to do something hard will then allow anything that comes in beyond my control. So any hard work feels like easy work. If I do the hardest thing in my day as soon as I get up when I don't want to and I do it because I just say, well, that's something I do, then everything else becomes easy. It's all these little weird, quirky, you know, strange things that I think, well, not I think, I know, add up to huge behavior shifts. And this is what we've got to do. I know we keep saying it, but we've got to shift our entire being. We've got to shift our behavior to someone that does hard stuff consistently and sticks with it. So that's why I want to do that. And then sauna is just great for you. Good for skin, which is one of my um, one of my goals. I have, actually, it looks, looks okay under the light, but my skin's not great. Um, good for cognitive benefits, good for fitness, good for everything. And as I say, fitness and business are interlinked. Um, maybe I won't go through all these. Uh, you can just pause the video and see all of them. But this is what I know when I hit all of this. I will feel amazing. My business will be in a great place. I'll be happy and that's all that matters. So things like uh, High Rocks, that's a fitness competition. Uh, marathon, we all know what a marathon is. Flexible. Um, this is a bit more of a balance. So at the moment I have zero balance. Every is business. Business, business, business. So if I can sign off at 8 p.m. most of the time, then I think that's a win. Um, a lot, a lot of this has to do with saving time as well. So when I was talking before about value versus price, this is something that I've weighed up for so long. So having someone just collect my washing, do the washing, do the pressing, ironing, so I don't have to wash, dry, or iron, and then having that a couple of times a week. Okay, maybe that costs fifty to a hundred dollars per week, maybe even more. But does that buy me back for five hours a week? And you may, might say, oh, you just got to load the washing machine. Well, yeah, all right, yeah, you're right. But outside of that, you've got to buy detergent, whatever it is. But then this is something that it's stupid. But when I go into the cupboard and I see things are creased and I'm like, oh, I've got to go in the other cupboard, get the ironing board, get the iron and then spend. I, I'm terrible at ironing as well. So I'll be ironing and it's still creased. And I've wasted like 20 minutes, half an hour on a t-shirt and it's still creased it's like i would have to do that for every item of clothing and it would just and it'd still be creased and it'd still go out the house looking like an idiot so realistically if i can just pay someone the value that i get from that is oh i can actually wear the clothes first off because they're not all creased some a professional always pay just always pay a professional because a professional will do it properly and they'll buy you back hours of your time so if you can afford it this is something i'm doing um, and, you know, save me hours, I can actually wear the stuff in my wardrobe, as I said, I don't have to worry about, oh, what am I going to, what am I going to wear, do I just have to wear shorts again, which I end up doing, the only time I dress up is for these YouTube videos, and even then, look, you, you can see that, the t you probably saw it in the video introduction, the t-shirt creased, anyway, um, what else is actually pertinent to business? Deep focus with ease. You see, this is where it all comes together. So sauna, good for cognitive benefits, also helps with sleep, also helps with skin. A routine also helps with sleep. Being more sensitive to caffeine helps with focus, helps with better workouts. Regular track work helps with heart rate, helps with sleep scores. What else have we got? Fully settled in a home. I'm always bouncing about between how, uh, between apartments. Like that helps with de-stressing which helps with sleep all of that helps with deep focus because if you're well slept which i am not ever but this is something i'm going to work with so signing off at 8 p.m helps with sleep if you're sleeping well if you're eating well if you're if you know what you're doing every single day so your day plan is dialed in all of this allows you to focus 
allows you to thrive in your business. If you can just switch on the deep focus, you have literally, what, what are we saying here? 80 grams of caffeine, that's like one or two Nespresso shots. If you can just have that and concentrate, deep focus for three hours, you're doing more work in three hours than most people do in an entire work week. And I, hopefully this doesn't like get clipped up on, maybe, maybe I'll clip it up on TikTok and drive up some uh, controversy. But most people, when they work, they just do BS. It's just like scroll on the phone, check their emails. It's just purely shallow work. If you can do three hours, deep focus, then you're getting ahead of everyone. And if you can do that then every day, if we just go right back to what I was talking about earlier, about what does a 10K a month web designer do? Three hours every single day. If you can do that, you're ahead of everyone. Everyone. Because no one's doing it. And this is why it all ties in. It's like a big tapestry where one helps the other, helps the other, helps the other. It all comes together. And then it all, all roads lead to better business. This is why I've built this list. Even down to the bedroom, like sunlight alarm helps me get up, helps me, helps me focus because I'm not groggy in the morning. And it all leads to me feeling like a superhuman, even business and first helps me. I say this helps me. I've never even flown business or first, but when I do, it will help me be less tired when I get to a new country. I might have Wi-Fi on the plane. I can work more. All of this comes together. So you've got to think of your own end of year life setup. This isn't, this isn't a goal. This is who you will be. Because you know, okay, I'm going to go step by step by step. Think about it like this. If you look at your life right now, you can only see the steps that it took to get there by looking backwards. When you're going through life towards whatever, wherever you're going, you don't know you don't know what the next step is. You don't know, oh, I'm going to take this step in four weeks. You only know by looking back. You see, you know, you think, oh, I met so and so who introduced me to some other person, and then we met randomly again at an event a year uh, a year later and then he gave me someone else's phone number who then introduced me to a client and then that client ended up being a client for five different websites and then that was how I got my business and then you look back and you go oh that thing led to that thing led to that thing so this is why we do the end of year and then work backwards hopefully that makes sense so that is the insight into how I want to be. So you can look back, December, when am I recording this? December 12th, 2024. See if I did all these. Hopefully I'll, I'll publish it on Instagram or something. Link to me Instagram is uh, is in the description so you can check that out. Anyway, that's that. Now we're going to go onto the juicy stuff. And I've just come back onto this and realized I was meant to come back and then say, let's talk about reverse engineering. But we've we've jumped ahead. That was reverse engineering. Super, super important. And now, as I said, we're going to get into the source. This is basically everything that I'm doing to become the person. Because I've gone, okay, there's the end of year. Let's work back. Step, step, step. We're looking at the pre-season. So, in fact, let's go over it and I'll show you. So, if we scroll down, we've got scale like crazy. But general, 2023. So, this is the pre-season. And then I'm planning further by quarter. So... This is my mantra to myself. I say, actually, because I started this end of November, I've said by November. Um, if I do these things, I will be earning $150,000 per month by November 2024. Because I know that all I have to do is execute. That's it. Just execute. I've taken the thinking out of it for myself. I've done all the groundwork. I've put the foundations in place for future Sam to just execute, to just walk the walk. I've spent hours, well, I've spent weeks strategizing, planning, refining how 2024 is going to look for me. So when January 1st comes, I just go, okay, there's the list. Here's Trello of what I need to do. Okay, I'm just going to do it. And I can just follow that blindly because I trust myself who spent weeks and weeks planning this to have planned perfectly. And you need to do this for yourself. You need to put a plan in place that's so airtight that next year's you can just go, all right, well, I'm just going to have faith and I'm going to put my head down and do exactly what the list says. Because when you don't have to think about something, it becomes second nature. So there's no friction. You don't have to, it, just to go on, on, on another tangent, this is why people will say, prepare your clothes for the next day. Because 
when you get up in the morning, you don't want to have to waste a decision on, oh, what am I going to wear today? What colour underpants shall I put on? Oh, what about the socks? It's just it's just laid out. You don't have to think because you're wasting mental capacity by thinking about needless things. We make all these decisions in a day and so many of us make BS decisions. We waste it on what am I going to have for lunch? What shall I wear? Oh, what train should I get to work? Ooh. And it's just, you're just wasting all that good energy in your brain. So all that to say, make a list, check it twice and just follow it. So this is what I'm doing. This is general. So this this bleeds into work, but we do have by Crawford for actual work here. General 2023. This is what I wanted to do by the end of the year. So first off, hire a content manager. What this allows me to do is free up all my time. So the content manager, who also happens to be my girlfriend, she will cut up all of the uh, video. Well, I use Descript to do these videos, which is a software. She will cut up all the videos, edit the videos. Hopefully she's done a good job on this. She'll then uh, run the TikTok account that I've just set up, that she just set up. Then uh, schedule all the YouTube videos, schedule the blogs, schedule uh, YouTube shorts, write all the descriptions, basically anything admin and things that I don't want to be thinking about. She does and does it amazing because what we've done is we sat down at, this was actually at the beginning of 2023 and we, we planned out what we were going to do. So I said, okay, help me with doing the YouTube descriptions and the scheduling. And we absolutely smashed that all year. We've been pumping out three YouTubes, three blogs, every week, like without fail. And that's worked so well. And so I thought, okay, for pre-season, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hire her to help even more, start planning out what I can delegate. And so I planned out, okay, these are the tasks, these are the duties that I want to take off my plate. And I'm going to do some like training videos, show how to do it, and then just forget about it. Just trust a pro to do their job, which I've done. And this is something that so many people, myself included, struggle with. If you go to a barber or a hairdresser, you've got to trust them to do your hair properly. Same goes for hiring someone or investing in something. But we never really apply this to business. So for instance, I'm not saying buy my course, buy my course. But if you're going to join any, any course, any program, don't go into it thinking, well, I know he's saying this or she's saying that. I'm going to try it this way. I'm going to try it my way. Just do it the way that people teach because that's what's going to get results. That's what got results for them. That's what's going to get results for you. Trust trust the process, but also trust the pros. And so that's what I've had to do because I am a terrible, terrible micromanager. I'm a, a ball buster and I hate myself for it. And this is something that I'm working on. And for pre-season, I was like, okay, if I'm going to hire a content manager, I need to just do the training and then be hands off. And so far, we've been doing it for maybe three weeks, four weeks already, and it, it's been it's been amazing. The delegation of tasks whereby they're not particularly money-making tasks. So for me, web design is the money-making task. This has been a game-changer because it's allowed me to focus on things that generate revenue in the now, whilst we build an amazing social ecosystem. So LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all of this. While we build that, and for me, it's on autopilot because I just record and then Lucy does the rest. It's amazing. Anyway, that's what I did, hired a content manager. Then next up, we've got create short content. So I knew, or I know, that shorts is is where it's at. So for this, for By Crawford, what I'm trying to do is showcase my talent as a web designer to prospective clients. So over the next year, I want to shift, it's not this channel, it's another channel, which will be linked in the description, but I put out three tutorials every single week on YouTube, all about Squarespace. I want to shift that to more so attracting more and more clients. So that channel gets like 10,000 views a month. I want to get that to 50, 100,000 views a month, but have two tutorials. So I'm still helping the community, but then also I want to be aiming at businesses and saying, hey, these are the problems that Squarespace solves. I'm talking to you as a business owner. Hire me to build your Squarespace website. And this is something else I invested in. It was a YouTube coach who's done all these ideas for me, told me exactly how to set up the channel 
And he even said, okay, if you're going to do uh, businessy videos like this, what I'm recording now, do it on another channel. And so I did it on another channel. So short content, this is just basically, oh, if you want to change a browser icon on Squarespace, boom, do it like this. And I, I know that shorts get pushed way more. So I'm trying to get more people to the channel. Short is where it's at. I'm also doing shorts for this channel, which is businessy shorts, which can be repurposed on TikTok and Instagram. So I've invested in an editor for those. You'll probably see it on this channel anyway. It's like all singing and dancing, whereas these long form videos are kind of more chilled. They're more informative. Those ones are like, just do this, do this, do this. And they work really well, but I, I want to keep a bit of a balance. But I, I knew short content was going to bang. And so I was like, okay, let's get this in place before the new year. Make it become a habit, become a person who records short content straight after the long content. So I will sit here and I'll record three long videos and then I need to habit stack and say, okay, Sam, you've worked on that habit for a year. Every Monday, you'll record three long videos. At the end of that, just tack on four shorts and then three reels. So like four shorts for Bike Crawford YouTube, three reels for uh, Six Figure Design Club YouTube. And so I wanted to get that in place, which I've already done, and that's ready to just carry on into January. That's been great. Become a regular pro pros blog contributor. That was a mouthful. So Squarespace has a blog for its circle members. I wanted to become the expert at Squarespace. And if you're not on there, you're not the expert. So I decided, okay, I'm just going to take things into my own hands and ask. And I got a, an article approved and I'm going on there. I think the, the article... The article's approved. I'm already an official Squarespace partner and all of these other crazy credentials, but if I'm not on the blog, then it's not quite there. So that's the cherry on top. So that was that. Get on there, accomplish that, just take it off. And by the way, if you're structured in the notes, just take it from take it from me. All you need is a title and then your subheadings or headings. And then in this, you just do a list and then just make it... Uh, a what's the name, a tick list, that's it, that's all you have to do, and then as you go through, just tick them off, tick them off, tick them off, until 2023 is all ticked off, so you need to start, let's say, late November to early December, and let's say your notes look like this, and you go, okay, one at a time, one foot in front of the other, I'm going to put a content manager in place, I'm going to get some short content on the go, I'm going to become a blog contributor, uh, and then TikTok, I hate TikTok, but I know that my partner knows how to use it so I said Lucy please just set me up a TikTok page optimize it and then that will help us with brand building so again as content manager that's what she does and that's been massive already which is great because I want to be seen everywhere in 2024 if anyone is searching for Squarespace this or Squarespace that I want my face to pop up like I've got the answer so hopefully well, not hopefully, it will work. I know it will. And then brand building, pitching, and inbox zero links. So I set up in my Trello all the links for anywhere that I should be building my brand. So Facebook, LinkedIn, um, and like specific search terms where I can answer questions. That's that's the source from the, from the course. Didn't mean for that to rhyme. But basically, in a Trello tab, it's got all the links that I need to click for the day to interact with whereby I can be seen, so like in forums, LinkedIn, Facebook groups, basically anywhere where Squarespace is, that's there. And then pitching is all the links that I need to use to pitch for that day. So it starts off with my pitching template document. So, hey, blah, 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 I'd love to do this work for you, blah, blah, blah. Here's my portfolio, let's book a call, blah, blah, blah. Then it's got all the links underneath. So like Upwork, People Per Hour, LinkedIn specific search terms, Again, forums, I traverse probably 12 to 15 different platforms every single day to pitch for work because the more outbound pitching you do and the more clients you land, the more practice you get, the more inbound you get and that cycle just continues and the snowball just grows and grows. So even though I get tons of inbound, literally an inbound or two every single day, probably more actually, but the, the fact that I still go out and hunt for work should say to you okay no matter where I am I'm never too big to pitch for work so always be pitching um, and always just make things frictionless for yourself so this is why again I, I try and bring things full circle but this is why I say that you need 
to basically make everything, make life easy for yourself. So instead of thinking, oh, maybe I'll go into my bookmarks bar or I'll try and remember the URLs, just put it in a notes document or a Trello tab that you can just click every day. Open them all up in a new tab and then just go through all your links because otherwise you're never going to do it. Just make it easy for yourself. So that's 2023 and we're still in general here. So uh, I mean, I can kind of skip over these, I think. Uh, knee refer. I've got a bum knee, so I'm going to get referred for that. Build Instagram to 7,500 followers. I'm well on the way to do that. I think I'm on 6.1-ish. Hire an email marketing expert. More podcasts. I've done three, maybe three or four. I want to do more and then do more public speaking workshops, etc. Because public, sp- I'm okay speaking to a camera, although you'll probably notice there's tons of cuts in the video. But I want to do more public speaking because it's hard and if you don't do hard stuff and you don't test yourself, then you'll never grow. So some more of that. And then we've got by Crawford. So this is, let's get this up. Uh, if I do it, I've got Six Figure Design Club down there, but no one cares about that. There we go. So you can see we've got by Crawford all the way down to the content non-negotiables. So optimized channel. I said that I got a YouTube coach. He told me, put these tags in your channel. He said, this should be your description. This should be your description on all your videos. So this should be your channel description, then video descriptions. These are your video ideas, um, and then a ton of other stuff. So I optimize that, even profile picture and banner. Then re-optimize all descriptions. So after he said, change these to your descriptions, I've gone through all 150-ish videos on the other channel and re-optimized to fit that description template. Then hired an editor. So that's the um, short form guy. And then also Lucy to do these video edits as well. Thumbnail designs, that's another one for Lucy. Content manager, extraordinaire. And then posting shorts, that's already done. Set up on all new freelance platforms and profiles. So that was something I'd done probably a couple of days ago at the time of recording. What I've done is I've gone through You Know Juno, that's one. Contra, that's another one. People Power Upwork, even Fiverr. I set up a gig on Fiverr just to be seen everywhere. Every single place any lead could possibly be looking, I want Sam Crawford to come up or by Crawford, you know, the business or the man. Either or, just constant touch points, constant touch points until they go, all right, I'm seeing this fella everywhere. Let's see what he's about. Check out the portfolio. Okay, the portfolio speaks for itself. It's it's decent. Okay, let me, let me book a call. And I make, not only do I make life easy for myself, in as many aspects as possible. I make clients or potential clients' life as easy as possible. So on the website, it's like, oh, you want to start a project? Here's the contact form. Oh, you want to book a call? Here's the call booking link. Book straight into Calendly. Bang. You get your video invite link. It goes into your calendar. Done. Perfect. So that's that. I've set up on all the platforms in the world, all the good ones. And then we've got invest in a monthly SEO package. So Right at the beginning, I talked about Henry from SEO Space. His agency, Rough Water Media, are literally like the best SEO agency in the world. They're amazing at what they do. And so I went big, paid six months up front, and we're going we're going crazy. And in Q1, we're setting, setting the bar at a ridiculously high level. So we're doing that. I'm trying to get ahead of myself. You don't have to stick to these. If, if I wanted to try and monetize my channel before Q1, then I could, I can start ticking things off. I just don't think I will. Then I wasn't planning on investing on this until Q1, so Jan, but the opportunity came up and I thought, let's let's just get started. Let's get ahead because everyone's switching off. In pre-season, everyone's, everyone's just, as I said, right at the beginning, everyone's just checked out. So whilst everyone is... I don't know why it's always stuff in mince pies. I think it's because it's just Christmassy. Maybe a maybe a Yule log. While well, there's stuff in Yule logs in the faces and having eggnog. If you're still dialed in, working on building an SEO strategy, you're working on setting up on all the freelance profiles. You're working on creating content and getting an editor. All of this. If you're doing this whilst everyone else is checked out, you're hoovering up all the clients that are still knocking about and. When January does come along and they're just sluggishly getting back into things, it will take them the entirety of January to get back up to pace. And by the time that they do that, you're light years ahead. You're gone. You've got 10 times the momentum. 
that they have because you didn't stop. You planned and you strategized and then you started to execute before the year was even out whilst people were still in food comas. You put in the hard yards while no one else was watching and you snuck ahead. So this is why it's so important to try and just, just get ahead of the curve if you can. Create strategized videos. So when I was talking about the YouTube coach, he gave me just reams and reams of content ideas. So I still need to do this. Um, I'm probably going to do the first one next week or the week after. I want to try and get one out before the year's end. Then I need to create a new pitch deck for Squarespace. So I often pitch for big projects that require pitch decks. Mine's okay, but it could be better. And if I can get a 1% marginal gain somewhere, then I'm going to take it. So this is something I want to do. And if you notice, like Q1 is three months, but I've only got four main things to tick off. I don't try and give myself too much because realistically, all I should be doing next year is getting work in, executing on that work and recording content. That's it. So the content gets me more pitches, gets me more work, gets me more things to talk about. And that cycle continues. It's make content. That content drives people to sign up with me. I get brilliant testimonials, create content, bang, bang, bang. Keep going, keep going, keep growing. So realistically, I don't need to be doing too much, just small iterations that are going to help my snowball grow. So create those strategized videos, new brand deck, a new pitch deck, sorry. And then I want to hire an in-house designer. So currently I do, I want to say, not every month has been 40,000. So maybe a quarter of a million dollars a, a year, something like that, maybe a little bit more. But basically, I do this all as a company of one in terms of the actual calls, delivery, etc. If I bring in one designer, just one designer who's on a level-ish with me, there's no reason why this can't. Three, four, no, more even, five, six X, especially with all the strategies in place. There's no reason why that can't grow and grow and grow. So I'm on the lookout for the perfect designer. As I said, I keep saying at the start, maybe it was in the middle, I don't know, but I have found two or three really good designers. One's doing the six-figure design called Landing Page. If that goes well, I'm going to try and bring her on board. And then there's another couple that I've got my eye on, I've contacted, and maybe we'll grow to a little team of three or four. But basically, Q1, I want to get at least one person in. Then I want to monetize the Bike Crawford channel. It's a really strong niche. YouTube plays ads anyway, so why wouldn't I try and get a slice of the pie? Then I want to rank better on 99designs. I see... On 99designs, which is the Squarespace Expert Marketplace, there's people on there that don't even respond to inquiries, and yet somehow they're on like the first page. I want to get on the first page. There's no harm in asking the question, how do I get higher? How do I get more clients? Always be questioning. Uh, <laughs> then I want to do pictures of the office for by Crawford, just to put on the website. Um, I'm obsessed with email marketing experts. I must have put this in like three or four times. But yeah, still need to do that properly. I've got one for Six Figure Design Club, but I need one for Bike Crawford as well. Then I want to do a full rebrand in Q3. So logo, pitch deck, fonts, blogs, brand guidelines, social assets. And I've got a site as reference here that I really like. And actually got in touch with the owner of this website, who is one of the designers that I want to bring on. Uh, she has a really cool site. And so I want to use that as a reference. And this is the thing. If you have references that you want to make, then just put it in brackets. Like if I say, okay, get homepage designed. And then in brackets, I can put references, SEO space and square kicker, for instance. I don't forget that then. And I can go back and go, oh, okay, right. I'm going to check that out. So if you're watching, great site. Um, and then Google ads. So once all that's done, I want to do some Google ads. I want to get more people in. Think about all the avenues that I can possibly be getting work. Again, when I, when I say I just want to be seen by everybody, this is how. If someone searches on YouTube, maybe these videos come up. If they search on Upwork, my profile comes up. Fiverr, Upwork, Behance, whatever it is. Okay, now on Google, organically, my blogs may come up. But then if I'm position one with a Google ad, even better. And then I'm thinking about monetizing by Crawford in some other way. Not sure what that way is yet. That's why I've left it late Q3 into Q4. And then with all the execution, just build the channel to 5,000 subscribers. And then off the back of that, all I need to do is execute on this. So these are the things that I need to do in terms of uh, content. 
So I've recorded two by Crawford tutorial videos, one, I keep calling them like strategy videos. They're basically videos from the strategy document that the coach give me. Then one design club video. This is all per week as shown here. Three business shorts. That's what's on this channel as well. And then four tutorial shorts, which will go on by Crawford and TikTok. So that is everything that I'm doing. That's my God mode life set up by the end of the year. Then this is how I'm working backwards to actually achieve it. So I've put in place all the things for this year. I've done them already. And then I'm going to try and get ahead with Q1. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not a need referral, but I'm going to try and hire an email marketing expert. I've done all this for 2023 for by Crawford. And then Q1, I'm going to try and get ahead, do a strategy video. I'm going to try and hire one in-house designer dependent on how the uh, Six Figure Design Club landing page redesign goes. That was a mouthful. Well, depending on how that goes, maybe I'll tick this off by the end of the year as well. And then these are all the non-negotiables for content. So I know what I need to do. Now, that's me. I mean, hopefully that wasn't clickbait because I did say this is what I'm doing. This is my blueprint. And I will show you some applicable stuff for you as well. But hopefully you've got some applicable stuff from this as well. And what I want to say is this just shows there's nothing there's nothing special, there's nothing secret. If you look at all of this, you already knew, okay, I need to pump out content. I need to create shorts, which I guess is content, but I need to be present on different platforms. I need to build a brand. I need to pitch for what I actually need to pitch for work. Oh my goodness. I actually need to clear my inbox. I don't need any referral. But if we look at by Crawford, okay, Maybe I need to hire a professional to help me. Maybe I need to be on every single freelance platform there is. I need to focus on SEO. I need to rank better on these platforms, whatever platform I sign up for. I need to have a strong design. I need to have reference websites in place. If I'm going to pump some money in, maybe I need to try some Google ads as well. You know all of this, but the key lies in the execution. We all know that we need to eat broccoli and chicken and potatoes if we want to get a six pack and we, you know, eat less, move more, but it's so hard to do. It's the same with this. We all know it's the basics done consistently every day for an abnormal amount of time that get results. And yet we don't do it. But by putting it in writing into a plan, into a step-by-step -step, quarterly tickable plan, we make it more realistic. We make this version of ourselves achievable because we have the steps. And by putting this right at the top, it reminds us, okay, I know what I actually need to do, but why? Well, there's your why. There's your why. This is the how. And so let's just dial it back a little bit and show you what you can do right now to go from wherever you are to six figures a year plus. And you join me back on the presentation on the source. So that was all of the source. Well, most of the source. Now we've got the identity shift checklist, which is the remainder of the source. So here we go, content calendar. And I've noted here to pump it out. So nowadays it's just not enough to be a good web designer. You have to show to the world that you know what you're talking about. You need to produce at least LinkedIn content. I wouldn't bother with Instagram, a Squarespace or a web design professional. I just wouldn't bother with that. Focus on LinkedIn nail your LinkedIn game, post about sort of things you're building, post about showing what you know what you're talking about in terms of like, oh, here's how I fixed a client's issue on X, Y, or Z. You know, here's a cool design I've done. Here's a development problem that I faced and I overcome. Maybe some personal stuff as it pertains to whatever you do. So I put one up this week and I talked about doing a high rocks race and how basically doing elective hard things makes the other hard stuff seem easy. So like, okay, I just chose to run and do all this mad stuff for 90 minutes. An email that comes in with a tight deadline, that's easy. You know, something some stupid like that, but try and get your personality across. LinkedIn, that is the biggest one. So just pump it out, three a week, you know, it's not too hard. Then you can focus on, so maybe blogs are equ equally as important. Maybe just do both at the same time. So Three LinkedIn posts, is that four? There's three. Three LinkedIn posts and try and do one blog post a week. That's it. Just put that content out there because let's look at it like this. 
if there's someone like me and then someone like you, not to like just take a big deuce all over you, but if you're a client and you look at me and then you go, okay, this guy has two YouTube channels talking all about Squarespace. He has a blog with almost 200 blog posts on all about Squarespace. He's a Squarespace partner, a Squarespace community leader. He's been to Squarespace HQ. He's a Squarespace this, a Squarespace that. He lives and breathes Squarespace. He's a big Squarespace nerd. Look at his LinkedIn. Look at his YouTube. Look at his blogs, blah, blah, blah. And then they look at you and then they go, uh, uh, I can see their website. Who are they going to pick? Like, all things equal, they're never going to look twice at you. And that is the harsh truth. They're always going to go with the person who looks for all intents and purposes more experienced. I know people who've been on the Squarespace platform for like 10 years and they've never built a presence. So they have 10 years of experience. They're amazing at what they do, but they just keep getting overlooked because they don't put themselves out there. They don't pitch for work. They haven't bothered to build any form of presence. And so they've missed out on a decade of brand building. If they had been building a brand for 10 years, no one could touch them. But the thing is they rested on their laurels I know everyone else has overtaken them. Skill comes secondary to looking the part and providing a good experience to a client. So you want to look the part first of all. Looking the part online is going to get your leads. So pump out LinkedIn, pump out blog posts. Once you've nailed that, once you've nailed those basics, then start to look at YouTube. Because realistically, people love watching content. They love watching solutions to problems because it's easy they love just listening and zoning out. Like you can zone out to this video if you want. Probably going to talk for like close to an hour. People love video content. So if you're covering the short form content in terms of just like a short post on LinkedIn, if you're covering the longer informative stuff in a blog and then you're covering the video format, then you, you're starting to build this social ecosystem. So this is why you've got to pump it out because just to keep up nowadays, you have to. If you're not doing this, you're just falling behind. It's no longer good enough just to be a web designer or a good web designer. You've got to have everything else. And if you're not, then you're going to get left behind. You're going to get no leads because just some referrals isn't going to pay the bills for too much longer. You need to keep up. And the minimum you need to do, like I said, LinkedIn blogs. After you've done that, try YouTube. After you're comfortable on camera, try doing TikToks and then shorter form stuff, and then hiring an editor to do cooler edits for your short form, and then maybe look at doing some workshops where you could pick up some more referrals, and then maybe try and do some public speaking, jump on podcasts. This is the exact path that I went through. I started doing LinkedIn a few years ago, then a year later, I started doing some blog posts. Fast forward another year, YouTube. Now this year is coming to the end. I said, I'm gonna do three a week, every week. Pumped it out, I pumped out the content, And now I'm comfortable on camera. I'm doing more public speaking. I'm doing workshops at universities. I'm doing short form stuff. Now I'm looking to go on more podcasts. This is how it goes. And the thing is, I've gone from exactly where you are, which, well, maybe you're in a different position, but in a position, well, I was in a position where I didn't know what to do. So I was like, oh, I'll just start writing some words on LinkedIn. So I went from not knowing anything to at least knowing something and knowing what works. So just follow the exact path that I went. LinkedIn, blogs, YouTube, short form, public speaking, workshops. All of this builds an amazing brand where people naturally gravitate towards you. If you then pair that with actually going out and hunting for work every single day, then there's no reason why you can't do 150k a month. It's not just me. This may be my blueprint, but this is your blueprint as well. You can go through these steps and you can go through the steps I've just shown and there's no reason why you can't do it too. You can at least do six figures a year, but why not do six figures a month? Why not? I know that sounds a bit mad, like just make more money, but there's no reason why you can't. If you have the basics nailed, if you're good at what you do, the only thing holding you back is the knowledge of an actual plan and this is the plan. So anyway, number two, oh God, I've skipped ahead. Do you know what? I've gone on such a rant that I've probably done all of these points. So short form, you want to get that content calendar stacked. So I think what I was thinking when I made these notes was blog, LinkedIn and blogs. And then short form comes later. So TikTok, YouTube shorts and Instagram reels. The thing is with Instagram reels is it works for me because I'm targeting people, not businesses. Most businesses aren't going to hire someone that they find on Instagram. 
Whereas I have a course, Six Figure Design Club, links in the description, but I have a course and obviously I need to find people. So that's why Instagram works for me. For you looking for B2B clients, honestly, short form should just be mostly YouTube shorts and then using those shorts on LinkedIn. You can try TikTok, you can try Instagram, but for me mainly, those are just for the design club. They're not really for Bike Crawford. Then SEO. So this comes back to my recommendation to do blogs. The SEO Space plugin, I'm not just saying this because he's a friend, but this has been a game changer for SEO on Squarespace. Before SEO Space, there was such a lack of any SEO knowledge or understanding or, or anything with Squarespace. It was just, it just wasn't anything to be honest. And obviously WordPress has Yoast. So I actually said to Henry, Henry, you're an SEO expert. You've worked and scaled a software company before. Why not bring them together and solve the community's biggest issue, which is SEO software for Squarespace. And so he'd done it. He literally just implemented it. It's now got like 2,000 users, maybe more. I think maybe 2,500. There's a lot of users. People love it. And it's like, it's less than $10 a month. So what I would say is install SEO space on your website and then write your blog, run a scan and then rewrite it or edit it to be SEO perfected. And then just do that every single week. By the end of the year, you'll have over 50 blogs. Now, 50 blogs is a lot of content. After that content being mature and if it's all SEO optimized, that's going to start bringing in leads. So don't think about it in, oh, it's just, there's one blog up or there's two blogs up. Think about it, okay, head down, I've made the plan and I just need to execute. Think about it at the end of the year. If you just do it every single week, you've got 52 blogs. That's the way you think about it. Don't think about the daily monotony. That just is what it is. You have to blindly follow your own instructions. Tell yourself you're going to do something, execute on it, and then look back at the end of the year. When you're doing next year's pre-season, just take a look back and go, oh, I can trust myself to plan and to execute, not just say that I might do this thing in the future. I made a clear vision for who I was going to be and where I was going to be. I told myself that was who and where I was going to be, and then I made the plan. I reverse engineered, I made the plan, put my head down, and I just did it. Okay, let me do the same again for next year. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. All this to say, $10 plugin, get it, make sure your blogs are banging and they're going to bring you inbound leads as well as the short form, as well as the content. Then personal brand touched on this. I've been on a big rant, so I think I've covered it all. Newsletter, actually, I tell a lie, I haven't covered it all. So if you're putting out loads of blog content, you're eventually going to get a lot of visitors. So my website gets roughly, I want to say 20,000 page views each month. I'm assuming this will go up the more I work with Henry on the SEO but that's a lot of visitors. That's coming up to 250,000 a year. And there's a lot of people there to capture in a newsletter. So what you want to do, I, I mean, I wish I'd started a newsletter years ago because I only have like 400 people on my newsletter. I, I just didn't ever push it and I wish I did. So what you want to have on your website is some form of pop-up with a lead magnet. So for me, it says download your free Wix versus WordPress versus Squarespace guide. And then someone leaves the email and they get an automated email that says, hey, here's your PDF. Once they're in my email funnel, which is why I need an email marketing expert, I can pepper them with emails then saying like, oh, here's some new content. Have you thought about this? Blah, blah, blah. Not really selling them on anything. I'm just giving them free value. Staying at touching distance, you know, just keeping front of mind trying to move them slowly through the funnel. But imagine you do this, you've got 20,000 visitors a month and 1% sign up. I think, let me do maths, I think that's 200. I think that's 200 people a month. 200 people a month sign up to your newsletter. Over a year, that's almost 2,500 people on that newsletter. Once they're in your little ecosystem, you can sell them on anything. If you wanted to push it, you could easily convert You know, 1% of those let's say 25 people on a website, 25 people, what's the average site? 3K, that's $75,000 every year just from your newsletter. And I know that I've just made that sound like super easy, but it is possible. And this is why it's, it's not super high on the priorities because I realized like that was like guru maths, but 
I'm just trying to I'm just trying to illustrate the point that it's possible and you should at least be trying to build it in the background even if you're not going to do anything with the newsletter yet just build it because there may be thousands if not tens of thousands worth of value in that newsletter when you come to use it so try and build that think of what your lead magnet's going to be pop it on the side and then just let it run easy peasy and then finally self investment so I'll put in brackets the 10x pension I've never paid a penny into a pension. You might be looking at me going, Sam, but you pension, you, if you put $1,000 in a month, then you're 65, you'll be a millionaire. Well, I want to be a millionaire by 20, what am I, 27? I want to be a millionaire by 28, not 68. I'm not a financial advisor, but I would say don't put your money, if, if you have aspirations to be a multimillionaire through Squarespace web design or through web design, through whatever means, then you need that money now, you need that capital now to enact change in your life right now than in 40 years as a little payoff when you can barely walk. So I've never paid a penny in, maybe that mindset will change, but all the money that I get gets pumped back into me and the business. When I say me, I don't mean like bottle service and you know all sorts of mad stuff. I mean personal trainers, uh, like coaches. Recently I've paid... Fifteen thousand dollars for a con like a content package, three and a half thousand dollars for the YouTube coach, two thousand dollars for the health coach, eight thousand dollars for the coach for six figure design club who taught me how to market it on Instagram and stuff. Obscene amounts of money on investment into coaches and mentors and courses and all of this because I know, okay, let's say I've spent I think I've spent like eighty thousand dollars this year on reinvestment. Okay, that's eighty thousand dollars. If we look at it as a price, it's like, oof, because I've got a decent car with that, Sam. But realistically, over my lifetime, that investment, I mean, it's already paid, it, it's literally, it's already paid for itself, so it's fine. But if you look over a, a lifespan, that is going to make me a hundred, if not a thousand times return over the next, what am I, 27? I keep forgetting how old I am. Let's say I live to be 77. Give myself another 50 years. Over 50 years, that's going to compound like crazy because I've been able to start so young and learn already how to do YouTube, how to market correctly. I've learned how to drive inbound leads, all of this. Imagine that as I grow in knowledge and reinvest and do that over time, how effective that's going to be. So 80,000, okay, I could have put that in a pension pot and let it gain 2% a year or whatever it is. Or I could use it now and then I could make all that money back within the next two to three years in terms of what I'd have made from a pension in 50 years, you know, whatever. So self-investment is is key. I don't want to sway you away from squirreling money away into the S&P 500, but I just I just think if you're looking for a 10% gain, you could spend $1,000 on, like I said, right at the start, a mentor for a week, and you can make 10 times that back by the end of the year with the knowledge that they give. And this would be a perfect opportunity to say, well, my course is only whatever it is. I, I don't even know how much it is. But I'm not going to do it out of principle because I've just said, I've set you up the self-investment spiel. I'm not going to plug it. But it's so important that it like, literally does not have to be my program. But it's so important that you stop looking at price and start looking at value. So if it's a fitness coach, like the one I have, okay, it's $2,000, but the ability to get into deep focus, the ability to sleep better, the ability to feel happier, that all has a knock-on effect in life and in business. And I've probably already made that back just from the improvements that I've made in the past month. Same goes for the YouTube coach. My YouTube's gone up by, I think, three or 4,000 views a month already, which is crazy. That's like a 40% gain in two months. Everything, every time I invest, something gets better. And I know if it gets better that quickly, it will compound into something massive. So self-investment, to give you an idea, I gave you an idea about all the stuff I've invested back in, but self-investment isn't self-care where you pay for a spa day or you treat yourself to a nice meal or a nice holiday. Like, oh, I've had a good month. I'm going to go and book a $4,000, $5,000 trip. Like, that's not moving the needle forward. That's nice. And if that's what you want to do, you know, if you just want to make some money and then spend it all on something that's okay, it might give you some nice memories, but it's not really going to give you anything back in terms of fulfillment or 
in terms of moving the needle forward in business. If you want to do that, that's fine. But if you want to just delay that gratification for like a year, two years, if you can delay that gratification, pump the money back into the business, ask the business, what do you want? What do you need? And the business says, I need a $50,000 injection into this, 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 and this. If you can just do that, then the business is going to pay you back 10, maybe 100x over the next two to three years. And then you can go on all the holidays and buy all the champagne and do all the things you've ever wanted. Just delay it a little bit. Invest into yourself. And as I say, I'm not a financial advisor, so don't go into debt and don't, you know, don't sell your house or run up all these mad credit cards on self-investment. Only invest your profits. So if you've made big profits or, or any any form of profits, try and stick it back into yourself or the business in a productive manner. That's the advice that I give. Then to bring it all together, so let's go back through what we've gone through. This was the blueprint or my blueprint. We've been through where I am right now. I've been completely honest. And then I've told you what the preseason is, how we frame it. So we frame it with like an athlete, why we do that, why it's important for clarity, how I structure my blueprints. We've been through notes and Trello. So just to quickly go back onto Trello a second, Trello, I'll link it in the description. It's just a free software. You set up your tabs. So for me, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then you give the tab a title. So on a Saturday, I know I need to look at my preseason to-do list tick things off within that to-do list, nice and easy. So we've been through that. Then we want to go through visualizing the dream life by the end of the year. So don't go any further than the end of the year. Just look at the behaviors and the actions and the outcomes that you want at the end of the year. And then we work backwards. So we reverse engineer it. And then we've been through the source. So actually putting the steps in place. So we've gone backwards through the steps and then made them go forwards. Hopefully that makes sense. Then the identity shift checklist, which is all the things that you can do right now to get to six figures and beyond either per year or per month. It's scalable and it works for every single step of the way. Like you can literally scale what's here and what I've given you for my checklist and go to you can go to a million a month if you want. That is the source. And then we've brought it all together. So that is that. If you stuck around, thank you very much. And if you did find this useful, please make sure to leave a like and hit subscribe. And small plug, If you want to work with me in my course, I'm going to link it below. It's Six Figure Design Club. I take Squarespace designers from wherever they are now, and I give them all the tools to turn them into a six-figure designer and beyond.